All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's that time to, of course, do what we call cruising with the case handler. I am David Squeeze-Adeke, and I'm here, and I'm elated, as usual, to talk about personal injury, to talk about immigration. I have two prominent attorneys in the United States, based in New York, ready, willing, and able to help a lot of people by answering their immigration questions. Uh, many of you know who I am. I am David Squeeze-Adeke right here on 93.5 WVIP FM each and every single day. And also, of course, on Facebook, David Squeezanicki, at times also on Instagram. I'd like to welcome our panel today to, like I noted earlier, prominent attorneys with the firm, Pollock, Pollock, Isaac, and DeSico, uh, referred to as PPID, and you'll hear that reference throughout the entire program. Their phone number happens to be 844-PPIDLAW. That's 844-774-3529. If you are watching us on Instagram, we ask, I mean, on Facebook or Instagram, we ask for you to share on Facebook. Um, the pages are The Case Handler, PPID, and of course, David Squeeze Share to at least 20 people so this way people can actually get their questions answered where immigration is concerned and more. Once again, the number is 844-774-3529. Welcome to all, of course, the, uh, okay. Welcome to, of course, all of the Link Up Media listeners and 93.5 FM listeners. One second there, guys. Let's see if we can stop whomever is calling me here. There we go. Sorry about that, gentlemen. All right. Too many apps running right here. All right. So let's welcome Conrad Pollock. How are you doing today? Alan E.K., how are you doing today? Good. All good. All good. Apart from good. the phones ringing up in my ears and yours. All right. All is well. Uh, let's jump off the show. Conrad is here, so I'm, we might as well get it out. Uh, Conrad, what's happening with immigration? What's happening? What do you think about the fact that we have a president-elect? Um, I need for you to reiterate what you think, your, in your opinion, and what you also know will happen on immigration before we ask Alan E.K. to give us the immigration news update. We've been talking about it all week um, with President-elect Joe, uh, Joe Biden. Uh, once he takes office, he has an ambitious um, agenda slated uh, regarding immigration. Uh, he plans to undo everything, pretty much, that Trump has done, uh, undo a lot of the damage that's been done. It's going to take time. Uh, some of the stuff that he wants to do, like uh, making, making DACA permanent, uh, that will require an act of Congress. Uh, we don't know whether that's going to be possible, um, but at the very least, he will, by executive order, uh, extend DACA at least for the four years that he's going to be president. So that's pretty much a, a sure thing. So a lot, I know a lot of kids out there, a lot of people out there have been really worried about that. I, I mean, I, we have clients, Alan, you know, we have clients yeah. that have DACA that have been living you know, on the edge for the last couple of years. One day they're going to lose their status. The next day it's going to be extended. The next day it goes to the Supreme Court. The next day the Supreme Court says, okay, we'll keep it going. Trump says, okay, we're going to change it and get rid of it again. It's just, it's like a, you know, back and forth, back and forth. Hell of a way to live your life, you know? Um, but that's going to end now, at least for the next four years. That's over. DACA is here, probably here to stay. Um, considering it has 80% of the population uh, approval in the States, you'd think that would already happen. But this is the state of the times we're living in. Uh, other stuff, a, a lot of good stuff is on, on uh, is coming. Um, what's really important to it to me, two of the most important uh, things that Biden is going to do is number one, he's going to get rid of the public charge rule. Uh, hopefully, the public charge rule will be dead in its tracks before it even get, gets a chance to gain traction. Um, and the public charge rule, we've talked about it before. It, it's a way. This administration just changed the public charge rule as a way to disqualify as many people trying to get their green card as possible. Uh, that's going to go away. It's going to revert back to what it was, which was fair. Um, and that's really good news because that's really that the effect of that public charge rule. Hopefully p the population is never going to know how bad it could have been because it could have been really bad. Um, and next, um, in, in terms of the way de deportation cases are processed, um, the Obama administration set up a list of priorities. You know, they basically uh, uh, used their limited resources to focus, to go after the bad guys, to go after the criminals, uh, to go after the people that need to be removed from the community, that are dangerous to, to the community. Uh, nobody disputes that. Um, and 
the, the difference is when, when the Trump administration came in, they changed the priority to ba basically making anybody here without a green card, anybody here illegally is a priority to get rid of. So it could be a dishwasher down the road or it could be a babysitter up the block, you know, didn't matter whether they had a clean record, whether they were just do, minding their own business, supporting their families, paying their taxes, being a, a good member of the, of the community, uh, didn't matter. Uh, we're going to go back to the way it was. And again, the, the, the Biden administration will prioritize uh, who gets put into removal proceedings, who gets harassed and picked up by ICE. Those days of ICE, you know, filtering through immigrant neighborhoods, knocking on people's doors at four in the morning, uh, it looks like those days are coming to an end, uh, which is all good news. So there's a lot of reason for optimism right now, a lot. A lot. And once again, folks, that's the uh, head of the firm, Conrad Pollock. And not many head of firms would actually be doing a show. You know, they put themselves out there so that you can actually speak with them. That's Conrad Pollock, the managing partner at the firm PPID. And speaking on, as to what it is that he believe is happening now and what will happen where immigration and more is concerned. We yeah, also the, have, squeeze, squeeze, yeah. squeeze, excuse me. This is not what I think. This is what Biden has said is he, he's going to do. All right. So two months from now, everything I'm saying right now will begin to take shape and become reality. So this is not just my opinion, folks. Right. This is the way it's going to be. So if you've been on sitting on the shelf, you know, waiting on the sidelines to file your case because you didn't know what it was going to be and so on. You know, now you should, as I said, there is a lot of reason for optimism. Things are going to go back to the way they were for the most part. Uh, it's going to take time. Uh, there are going to be kinks along the way, that's for sure. The uh, Trump administration, I don't know, they made like eight or 900 changes to the immigration process over the last right. four years. So that's not going to be changed overnight. It's going to take time. But the good news is, um, you know, even if there's a Republican Senate, um, it, it, the way immigration regulations, the immigration process has has uh, changed over the last several years. And I'm talking before Trump with Obama and all, because Obama couldn't get anything done either in terms of comp comprehensive immigration reform. Immigration is pretty much governed these days by executive order. And Biden won't need uh, Congress to make a lot of the changes I've just discussed with you. Um, just like Trump, Trump, Trump changed nothing, Trump. Trump changed nothing. Say that three times fast. Trump, Trump changed nothing in terms of the actual law. He changed regulations. He issued orders, proclamations. All of that stuff can be can be done unilaterally by the executive branch. Don't need Congress to do those things. So what Trump did that way, undoing a lot of what Obama had done prior, but now we're just going to go back the other way. So if Biden can't get these things through Congress, he's just going to issue executive orders to undo a lot of the stuff, most of the stuff, hopefully all of the stuff that Trump has done by executive order. So in that respect, it's good news. Absolutely. Once again, folks, this is called Cruising with a Case Handler, a show on personal injury and immigration. The case handler himself is not here today, who happens to be the top personal injury attorney, in my opinion, on this station, 93.5 WVIP FM, and also, of course, within the community. Uh, let's reach out to Alan E.K. after I give it a phone number which happens to be 844-774-3529. Alan has one of the longest depth of experience. Um, uh, Conrad does a much better job of expanding on his depth. Conrad, can you do the honors for me, please? What's, gr what's great about the general is that he's able to offer a historical, an historical perspective on, on the economy, on, uh, on immigration. You know, the, the, the closest equivalent so the times that we're living in right now is probably, you know, the, the times when the Great Depression was just beginning in the 20s, which is roughly what, 90, 100, <laughs> about 90 years ago, which is when Alan started practicing. So Alan has a really, really sound idea of his, a, a historical perspective on things. So Alan, come on. I mean, Herbert Hoover, I mean, it was different. <laughs> Herbert, when you voted for, you voted against, you voted for Roosevelt against Herbert Hoover back then, I know. But, <laughs> but I mean, it was, the, the times were similar. Right. Yep. All right. Welcome, Alan. Let's talk, man. You are one man that's got so much information about immigration law, U.S. immigration law. What's happening? Talk to us. Okay. Let's pick up from where Conrad left off. And <clears throat> as he pointed out, there's so many changes that happened in the last four years. There's no way that a new administration could reverse the things that have been done in the next four years or even the next eight years. But still, there are a lot of things that Biden could and has promised to do. And let's talk about some of those things. As Conrad mentioned, 
Uh, Biden has said he will reinstate the DACA program, which Trump moved to terminate in 2017. He will try to create a task force to reunite. Everybody's heard about the 545 children that nobody can find. Uh, he's going to try to, uh, Biden is going to rescind the Trump administration's travel ban from 13 different countries. Uh, he's also going to deport only undocumented immigrants who are convicted of felonies. So the deportation uh, of people will temporarily be halted, except for people who are convicted of felonies. Now, Biden has put out about a 10 page or 20 page plan. And I'd like to go over some of the things that he has said he would do or promised to do. Okay, now here's a nice, well, as, as Conrad mentioned, <clears throat> he's gonna reverse the public charge rule, which is a ter terrible rule. So we don't have to work about, worry about that. <clears throat> he will probably end workplace raids, which have been going on for years under Trump, even before Trump, but worse with Trump. Uh, here's an interesting one. <clears throat> He's going to restore and defend the naturalization process for green card holders. What does that mean? It means he's going to streamline and improve the naturalization process. He's going to address the naturalization backlog. We have a big back naturalization backlog. He's going to prioritize reducing that backlog and processing naturalization applications quickly and reject the unreasonable fees that they were thinking about putting in. Interestingly, <clears throat> domestic, a lot of people listening to this program are domestic workers or no domestic workers or related to domestic workers. Biden is going to support something called the Domestic Workers Bill of Rights, which will be very good news for people who are domestic workers and have been getting the short end of the stick from their employers and from the government. He's also going to, and he's going to focus on abusive employers of domestic workers. Uh, so these are some of the things that. What does that mean? Abusive employers of domestic workers. In other words, we, we, all, we all know <clears throat> that a lot of domestic workers <clears throat> are subject to abuse <clears throat> by their employers. Biden is going to try to work that out and put in legislation or even executive orders to protect the domestic workers who have been subject so far to abuse by their employers, nobody really helping them very much. Uh, he's going to preserve the DV lottery. As people know, we have a lottery system where people can file and get green cards under the lottery. Trump was threatening to knock that out. <clears throat> Biden is gonna preserve the DV lottery system, which is a good idea. Um, one of the things that he's been talking about is if you have an immigrant visa case going, but it's going to take quite a while, there's a possibility to give you a temporary non-immigrant visa while you wait for your permanent visa to be improved. Alan, can I interrupt you for a sec? I mean, for that right. to happen, I mean, that would be a great, that would be a great thing, right? But I mean, doesn't that doesn't have to go through Congress. That requires a change in the law, no? Well, but he might do, there are a lot of things, as you, you know, he, which he can do in terms of protecting people by um, proclamations, which Trump has been doing. So yes, it might need a change in the law, but there may be some things he can do short of a change in the law to protect people who are waiting for their immigrant visa cases going on. Yeah, Maybe, I mean, just so, so everybody's aware, I mean, if, you're, if a U.S. citizen is applying for their brother or sister, a case like that could take 15 years. And if the applicant, the beneficiary is in the United States, obviously they're going to be legal at some point, you know, if they're not already when they start. Um, so what Alan's talking about, what Biden is proposing, is that they, this person would have some kind of status in the interim while they're waiting for the green cards to happen. I mean, right. he has proposed it. Uh, personally, I, I wouldn't get my hopes up. Um, and that things like that have been proposed previously. Uh, I mean, it's a great idea. I think it would be a wonderful thing. A lot of people would love it. Uh, it would say, it would make a lot of people's lives a lot easier. Um, but I wouldn't get my hopes up on that one, personally. I mean, he has a very ambitious plan. It's he does. About he does. 10, 10 or 20 pages. And if you go up to the PPID website, 
uh, which Louise will give you information about that. You'll see a summary of Biden's immigration plan, which is very lengthy and very, very positive. But that's uh, a vast change, Conrad and Alan, from <laughs> where we are coming from, a vast change which will positively impact everything that happened over the past four years, like you said earlier this week, Conrad. I mean, this is great. And I think everyone that's listening really need to now say, hey, listen, immigration benefits are about to open up even more. They should call the firm. They should actually right now make their move because nothing lasts forever. Changes come from different angles. So now is the time to reach out to the firm, you know, call PPID, Pollock, Pollock, Isaac, and DeSico. Their number being 844-PPID-LAW. Call them for immigration. Once again, everyone that's watching us on Instagram or Facebook or listening to us on 93.5 FM, the attorneys will give you a free phone consultation. Just schedule that consultation with them. But I don't believe everything lasts forever. No, that could potentially change in the near future where you can't get a free consultation. So call this number now, 844-774-3529 and ask your immigration questions. Many of you are, are out there. You've got questions in immigration. Make the link, make the call. I'm giving you attorneys to answer those questions. They are located in New York, New York City, Peekskill and Brooklyn. Their number, 844-774-3529. I'll let you finish saying what you're saying, General. General Allen E.K., we call him the General because he knows so much about immigration. Go ahead, General, my attorney. Bear in mind that uh, Trump is still gonna be in power until January when Biden takes over. There's a lot of poison that they can put in and may try to do between now and then. So you will need help. Not Don't just wait till January. You should get in touch with us right away because I'm predicting, and a lot of people are predicting that uh, Trump and Stephen Miller, his uh, number one anti-immigration man, are gonna try to push out a lot of bad things until Biden comes in. So uh, there's a lot of things you have to be wary about. You have to worry about uh, everything is going to be not going to be rosy in January, but get to see a lawyer talk to us as soon as possible because you don't want to wait for them. I, 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 everybody's predicting that they're going to try to put out more of their poison until Biden comes in. So you've got to be careful about that. Uh, we're hoping that they're going to end work, workplace raids when Biden comes in. We're also hoping that there's going to be more training uh, of ICE and CBP who have been doing, doing a lot of bad things um, and they need a little more training. Uh, they need professional oversight, better educating them. And uh, uh, of course, uh, the people that Trump has put in to head the different agencies uh, are really not very good people. Uh, so we're really hoping that he's gonna appoint better people to head the agencies including probably an immigration czar who will oversee all of immigration for him. So, so far. You know, you know by the way, you know, uh, relative to what you're talking about, Alan, right now, you know, folks, don't take our word for it. When we, when Alan, when I say immigrate, the, what Trump has done, you know, installing these people in these various positions with the service, with ICE and so on, are bad people. Don't take our word for it. You want to see it, see it, you want to see it up close? Immigrant nation, right? Document. It's a documentary uh, that came out early this year. Sorry? On Netflix. Right. Immigrant Nation on Netflix. It came out this year. It was done with the authorization of the administration, with the with ICE, with immigration. And once they saw the finished product, they changed their mind and they sued to stop it from being released because it showed, unfortunately, the, the accurate and unfortunately really negative view of what the uh, administration was doing with regard to immigrants. But again, don't take our word for it. Go to Netflix, watch the, watch the documentary. It's five or six parts. Watch, see for yourself what this administration has been doing and what they're capable of. All right, we're not making it up. This is fact. So Absolutely. we're hoping that, and it's probably gonna happen, that he's gonna appoint better people to head the different agencies that impact on immigration. Now, the people he's put in have been, been not been very good. They've been doing a lot of terrible things. And so there's going to be a clean sweep of a lot of the government agencies dealing with immigration once Biden comes in. But 
he's not coming until January and they can do a lot of bad things in the meantime. So you're gonna need, and we will be happy to try to help you as soon as possible. And you may still be getting denials of cases. Uh, the 944 public charge thing is still in effect until Biden comes in and you could be getting notices from immigration about the 944, you didn't put it in, you didn't put in enough. So a lot of things are going on. Uh, as far as the, the removal cases are concerned, they keep pushing back the date for removal cases. So there are three kinds of removal. In New cases. York, Alan, that's in New York only. That's right. There are three kinds of removal cases. Number one, where you're detained. Okay, mm -hmm. there, the, the pushing back doesn't apply because they, you're detained and they're gonna do something with you. There are, but you have a removal case pending and you have not been detained. Uh, that's been pushed back and pushed back and now the latest is November 27th. So uh, if you're waiting for your removal case to come up, you're not detained, uh, it just keeps getting, and there's no date has been scheduled yet. They keep pushing back a date and pushing back to November 27th. So if you have a removal case coming up, we'll be happy to talk to you about it. Uh, Squeeze has given you the number. I, yeah, think I tell you what, let me give out that number. Once again, folks, I am speaking with attorneys from the firm PPID, Paula Paula Isaac and DeSico. We're talking on immigration right now. And I know a lot of you have questions on US immigration. This, in my opinion, is the most powerful law firm to handle your immigration cases. Call them now. I have made it possible with these attorneys, with this firm, for you to get a free phone consultation with an attorney. That normally doesn't happen anywhere in the United States. And these are real bona fide practicing attorneys. Make the call right now. The number is 844-774-3529. That's 844-774-3529. Gentlemen, I want to ask a quick question before this person goes. Um, it's an immigration question. It says here, hello, all. My wife is a permanent resident. We submitted her, I, I, her I-90 a month ago to renew her permanent residency. It expires in December. It says it's estimated that they'll take nine months to complete the case. All right. When her permanent residency expires in December, is she still safe to stay here since, it, since her paperwork to extend its processing? Is she able to yeah. fly, leave the country? One thing at a time. She, she's, yeah, she's, got, she's got a lot of questions. Yeah. Yeah. She's okay. She's still a permanent resident. That she doesn't have to worry about. But traveling is a little, a little more complicated. And showing proof to a possible employer that you're legal is a little more complicated, but basically she's okay. She's still legal waiting for the paperwork to come in. But if, if situation comes up where she wants to travel, you better talk to us about that. Or if a situation comes up where an she's looking for employment and her card is expiring, you better talk to us so we can help you with that. Conrad, do you want to add to that? Um, no, what you said is actually is 100% is correct. Uh, her, she's safe, um, even though her card may have expired or, or will it will expire. Uh, she, she's fine. Uh, it's like renewing a driver's license, you know, for the most part, in, in terms of effect. In terms of travel, yeah, do not travel. Uh, first off, you shouldn't travel anyway for, for pandemic related reasons. But if you have to, you need to get permission, you need to get authorization from the immigration service before you go. In order to do that, it's a process. Um, I would say, say, call us and we can help you with something like that. We do that often. Absolutely. And the phone number. The same thing if you're applying for a job and the employer is giving you a hard time because your card has expired, we'll help you with that too. Okay. Please. And once again, the phone number for the firm is 844-774-3529. Call before the top of the hour and you're guaranteed a 100% free phone consultation. Can you imagine that? With an attorney, 844-PPIDLAW. Um, someone says here, Conrad and uh, Alan, my attorneys, any news on the I-130 F4 ban? Will they even remove it? Been waiting 11 years. <laughs> He's going to keep waiting until his priority date is current. I mean, it, again, it takes, you know, up to 15 years to get that thing done. Plus, they're subject to the travel ban. So uh, just be patient, friend. Okay. President, uh, right. F4 is up to September 22. 2006 in this month of November. So it, okay. it's, it's a long category. 15 years. Yep. There are a lot of people waiting and waiting and waiting. 
Okay, you heard the attorneys here on what we call Cruiser with a Case Handler show on immigration and personal injury. Also do remember there's another department of the firm, that's the personal injury department headed up by Adam Handler. You can call him also if you ever get hurt in an accident and that number is 844-774-3529. The same number for immigration, but different department. Hello, can anyone help me with this? I received an update. What are the chances of me being denied or approved during interview, applying for the F2B visa? Sponsor father does not meet the minimum in income requirement to sponsor the intending immigrants for this case. The consular officer will make a decision regarding this requirement at the time of the interview. I guess they're reading off what it is that they have there. P.S. I submitted my sister's docs as joint sponsor. She's a nurse and she earns well. If it's just, I mean, if they submitted a joint sponsor uh, affidavit of support, if she makes enough money, she'd be fine. Those, if, that, if, if income is the only issue there on the F2B case, F2B, by the way, is a permanent resident applying for an adult unmarried son or daughter. Um, and they could bring their kids if they have uh, kids under 21 as well. But as long as there's enough money to support everybody, they should be okay. Okay. And then there's a, there's a uh, follow-up on the, the one that was before here about the permanent residency expiring in December. It says, um, also her mom is old and needs taken care of. She can't stay here permanently, but she's been here visiting for a few months now. My brother-in-law claims that if she goes back to Mexico for a week or so, she can turn right back around and come stay with us. I'm not sure that's accurate. So I wanted to know, is there a limit on how long someone can come visit? How long they have to stay away? Um, for before they can come back well that's that's a dangerous proposition what they're proposing <laughs> so what she's 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 smart to question that um or he uh it's it look it's a judgment call it's it, a lot of factors go in it when you when, when an immigrant or non-immigrant is arriving at, at the airport to come to the united states it's a it's a discretionary judgment call on the part of cbp at the airport to let them in give them a visa or whatever um depends how long this person has been here how often she's been here if that person has a tourist visa and has been spending more time in the United States than outside the United States over the last couple of years, they might not let them back in. They just left. They were here for six months, left for a week, and then come on back. Might not get in. So right. there, there are a whole host of factors involved there, which I don't know what the deal is in terms of um, what what the history is there. But you got to be careful. All right? You can't. Just, if you've been here for six months, leave and come back a week later and try to get another six months. Not so easy to do. They might turn you back. That is true. And that's very, very true. And we have heard and seen the uh, nightmares that have happened where that is concerned. You could lose your visa that way, too. They could, they could yeah. cancel the visa right there on right. the spot. Ladies and gentlemen, this show has been Cruising with the Case Handler. Uh, today we did uh, Strictly Immigration. But do remember, the, the, the firm is a full-service law firm in the capacity of, yes, immigration, personal injury, family law, real estate, business law, criminal defense, and much more. Call the firm at 844-774-3529. We're concluding the show at 93.5, 844-774-3529. Gentlemen, I want to say thank you so much for doing a wonderful job here today. Um, before we go, anything else you'd like to add, Conrad or Alan? Um, the, the last point relative to the things we've been discussing today and what we've been discussing all week, you know, the, the, the incoming Biden administration is in terms of immigration, a, a, a very easy uh, way to look at things is whereas the Trump administration viewed immigration, just the immigration issue in general, Im the Trump administration viewed it as a negative. As, and not, I'm not just talking about, you know, weighing it, eh, maybe 50, 59, 41, right. 50, 51, 49, you know, negative versus positive. No, for the, for, for the Trump administration, uh, immigration was a negative, period. There was nothing good about immigration as far as the Trump administration is concerned. Biden is the opposite. I mean, Biden, look, I, again, it's not like, you know, if, if you're a convicted rapist or if you, you, you've, uh, Cross the border from Mexico into immigration 15 times over the last 20 years and have committed a whole host of crimes. It's not like Joe Biden's going to say, ah, no problem. We want you here anyway. That's not the case, right? Which I'm sure you might start hearing over time once Biden starts implementing his policies. Uh, but Biden recognizes that immigration is a net positive, that the, the United States has, an, has a history of, immigra of immigration. Uh, you, you think 
uh, of the major companies these days, tech companies uh, that have been created by immigrants. Uh, the Biden administration is aware of that. They view immigrants immigration as a good thing. Um, and, and that's good because immigration is a good thing. Um, uh, Tesla is the first one that comes to mind. There would be no Tesla as a U.S. corporation without immigration. Uh, and who's going to create the next one? You know, I, I mean, under the Trump administration, if they had their way, which they've had for the last few years, uh, the next creator of, of the equivalent of Tesla would be building his business in Canada or in Germany or somewhere, you know, in China, right? Biden will hopefully change that back to the way it was and right. make make the United States a more welcoming place for immigrants uh, to come and contribute to our society and to make and improve our society. Um, and uh, personally, I'm very thankful that the, administ that the Biden administration is coming in and will reintroduce that, that very positive concept back into the United States, which is the way it should be. Absolutely. Thank you so much, managing partner of the firm, Conrad Pollock, giving his monologue. All right. What about you, Alan? <laughs> well, an another good thing is that they're going to stop putting money into building a border wall. Federal, <laughs> federal funds have been poured into whatever they're, they're doing down on the border. That's what do you mean? What are you talking about? Well, I thought Mexico was paying for the wall. Right. <laughs> in Trump's mind, Mexico is paying for the wall. Not in Mexico's mind, but basically that's going to stop putting federal funds into building a border wall in Mexico. That's going to end as soon as Biden comes in. Another good thing for Biden. Well, I mean, in fact, in terms of the wall, I mean, not, not much wall has been built in the last four years. I, I mean, most of, most of the construction that's been done was to repair wall and fencing that already existed. In terms of actual new mileage that they, they created, very little, very little. And to do so, by the way, because Congress rightfully said, no, we're not going to give you money for your ridiculous wall. Uh, what the Trump administration did was take money from other agencies like the Department of Defense, uh, you know, because they couldn't get money elsewhere. So they would take it from the, the, the from the Defense Department, for instance, which would instead go to veterans and to military bases and, and, and so on to, to build this wall. Right. That is over. That is over. Okay. Uh, thank you all so much, attorneys. Uh, this concludes our program, Cruising with the Case Handler. Today's show was on immigration. Everyone that's watching us on Instagram, Facebook, and listening to us on 93.5 FM, now is the time to make the call to the firm here in New York, the number being 844-774-3529. That's 844-774-3529, a full-service law firm right here in New York City, ladies and gentlemen, Peekskill and Brooklyn, ready, willing, and able to help you. 844-774-3529. Conrad, thanks. Alan, thanks. And we'll catch up and speak again very soon. Okay. Let's see.